All right, welcome to part two of Paul Eller E. And um, the more I look into these prepositions, the more I've learned about them. And if you are, I just want to say before I start that if you are watching this and you're just beginning to learn Norwegian, don't be intimidated by this video. Uh, it, it, just look at it as, uh, you know, in general and say, wow, you know, um, these prepositions work differently and they they're not uh, just be forewarned about it I kind of wish I had known in general uh, what they how they behaved and everything uh, before I got started because I would have saved a lot of time but uh, let's get started with uh, with the uh, locations here um, if it's gonna be in a city it's e bien uh, for the people in the be in the city. If it's located in the city, it's usually e bien. Okay, but you will see pa is used digor ut pa bien. Okay, so it's really um, the people are kind of using. They're going out on the town and. It's a little bit dif different there, so you have to pay attention. Uh, it's not always going to be E being, but if it's something that's in a city, it's usually E. Okay. Um, e, Ivan, okay, that's another one that's usually uses E. And that's kind of a little bit different because you're doing something with the water, and uh, but it's you usually see it as E in the water. A po stranen. I see that a lot and when I was looking at this one, it when the peop when someone's on a beach and they're using the beach, uh that they are po stranden. If they are going uh somewhere near the beach or to a place next to the beach or you will see till stranden, um but a if you're on the beach and you're using the beach, it's po stranden. Okay. So, uh, anything to do with the woods, being in the woods is usually e. Um, and this one was kind of interesting. Uh, D er po vayen. They are on the road, but if it's just D er po vai, then it's they are on their way. So, but uh, having to do with the road is paw, and just so happens that paw is used in on the way as well. So uh, that's kind of cool to know. Um, continuing uh, here, I have you can use either um, article for hutta. Um, anytime you have usually something in the mountains, okay. It's paw, so as a general rule, uh, postian on a trail, you you would go on the trail. Uh, but it's e parkin, okay, in a park. Usually it's e parkin. So, I mean, what you want to do is Google um, these words, Google these phrases, and see how they're used, and also, I have some live links in part one of this that you can click on to see. Uh, and remember that all rules or, you know, all of these things are not 100%. Uh, it never is, but it's, it's uh, some of these, sometimes it follows patterns. And like I said in part one, you want to just associate the uh, preposition with the noun. You know, e parkin, po stian. Okay, like that. That's how you remember them. Okay, ut polandet. Okay, in the countryside is almost always pa. Pa fjorden, pa shown. Same thing. Pa pa. Um, and and that is having to do with lo being located there. Um, you can uh, be in the sea, uh, but if you're working on the sea, if you're, something's located at sea, 
then it's paw. Uh, and here, East Clumper, Rastanet, Paw for Tawit, okay? Um, what's cool is, well, Rastanet, you'll see that one used with all kinds of other prepositions. Uh, Rastanet, uh, Fra, Rastanet, Till. Um, and, but in this case, it's paw because the paw is tied to the sidewalk or pavement. That's what for tau it means, sidewalk or pavement. And that's where the paw comes from. So don't get confused and think that the, this is necessarily tied with paw. Um, and that's what's kind of funny once you get a feel for which one, that these prepositions work with the uh, noun here they're attached to it, kind of assigned to it, then you get a, start to get a feel for it. You notice the patterns and um, you can just, you just get more comfortable. Your brain accepts it as, uh, as being uh, a fact. Okay, and now here are these idiomatic prepositional phrases. These are so important. Uh, that's actually called fast de Utrecht and uh, or prepositions utric, but fast utric are these um, sayings, basically, these little phrases. And what's amazing is these uh, probably are responsible for, I don't know, 50% of what you don't understand when you listen to the radio or watch TV or, you know, if somebody's talking to you or you're reading. If you don't know this prepositional phrase, it will make Chances are it won't make any sense. You might have heard Havant E used and understand it intuitively because you've heard it before. But there's many, many of these phrases. And uh, when, you're, when you first start learning Norwegian, nobody teaches you these, or at least they didn't teach me that. So, when, you know, these words uh, will be used, these phrases, they're used all the time, and it'll go right over your head if you don't know, if you're not familiar with them. So it's very important, and I've been, um, I, I write them down every time I learn one. I write it down, and I, I think I'm going to make some flashcards out of them. But uh, what I did was I, you know, got some sentences, and uh, see how the verb ha is uh, conjugated or void to uh, past tense and uh, present tense and all the different tenses like these if it's got a verb in the, in the uh, prepositional uh, phrase here that can be conjugated and um, adjectives can be slipped in okay so they change they they will appear in many different forms and uh, but once you're familiar with them they're really easy to spot and you, you'll know what they mean um, so these are just two examples using um, a prepositional phrase with e in it and uh, let's go to the next one here okay here's one with paw for shell and paw and that means the difference between and um, so Hold on a second. So here's another uh, example. This one really doesn't have a verb in it, but it changes, okay, from bestemt, okay? In other words, a, a definite, um, the definite article is included. It's the difference between. It's bestemt. And then um, here is a version where it changes from bestemt to ubestemt. So it's just any difference or a difference, you know, it's it's not a definite, it's indefinite. So, you know, if you don't know these and you're listening to the radio and somebody, you know, has says this in a sentence, it, it's probably going to go right over your head if you don't know this. And uh, pe Norwegians know them, they, and so uh, it's no problem and they use them without thinking about it. Uh, okay, here's another one. And I ha like I said, I have a live link in part one of this for prepositional phrases. There's two pages uh, with a whole list of, of different ones. Uh, Vera for elske e, okay? And that one just happens to use e. 
and it means to be in or fall in love with. Uh, here's one. You will not know what this is, you know, unless you know this phrase, okay? We had an ikka flax eat a hella tat, okay? Um, but if you do know what it is and you hear that, someone say that, you'll know exactly what it means. It means they're saying at all or, you know, all together. Um, so, and I just picked a few examples. I'm not going to do them all. There's no time. Halispo. So you probably heard this before, Lispo, um, and of course, uh, it can. This can be conjugated and everything, but uh, this is a fast phrase. Fast means stuck, fixed. You know, it's a fixed expression, and pa is uh, pa is part of it. It doesn't change. So the only thing that'll change is maybe how it's being used in a sentence and all mixed in. Um, but that, that's another example of a, of a prepositional phrase, idiomatic prepositional phrase. Here's, here's one, gomedpo, okay? So I would have thought if I just heard this without uh, knowing this, that this was a phrase that it meant go with on. And that's kind of close, but if you know that this is a, a fast expression, you know, stuck expression, then you know what it means. And when you hear somebody say it, it means to accept or to agree to. So these are very, very important, and they, it will save you a lot of time, and I'll bet you 10 to 1, it'll increase your comprehension, especially when you're listening, uh, to, and people are going really fast, because they'll say, Gomedpa. You know, they, they'll say it all like it's one word. And so it might as well just be one word, except for the fact that it gets broken up, and it can appear um, in so many different forms, the same um, expression. So I, I was kind of, I'm excited. This is the latest thing for me is these um, fast to Utrecht because they're not uh, exotic at all. They're used so much. Uh, that's why they're so important and they'll, they'll help with your first story also, uh, for uh, comprehension. Um, now here, going to locations again, um, if it's a city and it's on the coast, it'll be in, and it's in Norway, it'll be E Bergen or E uh, whatever the city is that's on the coast. But uh, chances are if it's inland, it'll be Pa, okay? So, and it means the same thing, uh, but not all the time. I was told, you know, it's not, that's not 100%, but um, that's, that's just an interesting uh, rule. And it does kind of hold true. And this is for things that are located in the city. I mean, if people are going to go to it, you know, um, then you would use other prepositions. And since this is the, these two are the first uh, prepositions that I'm doing, I'll stick with these for now. Um, Posorlandet i Vest Agder, that's where I live, in southern Norway, in Vest Agder, okay? The region, uh, I guess, uh, uh, north, south, east, west would be Pa, but the county would be E. And it kind of has a ring to it, you know, so. Um, all right, towns and cities outside of Norway are usually E. E Tokyo, E New York, E blah blah blah. Um, and uh, people are usually E countries, like E USA, um, E Norga. You know, things and people are usually, you know, when you're describing them, they're in that country. And then the last one here, uh, islands are either Pa or E, <laughs> depending on the island itself. Um, s small islands, you know, uh, would usually be Pa, uh, but like a big one, like, uh, uh, is it, I don't know, bigger islands are sometimes Pa, so you want to pay attention to that. You, and watch these, watch how they're used, and you will learn. I mean, that's what uh, you're only going to learn so much in your Norse curse. I mean, unless you go for the rest of your life, you've, you've got to teach yourself 
this and become familiar with them and practice. You know, that, that's what I've found out. I've got uh, tons of notes for more um, sentences and, and uh, you, the, uh, like rules and sort of um, things that happen with Paul and E, but I can't include them in this video. I don't have time. So later on, I'm going to do a, probably do a part three of this. And um, so if anybody has any suggestions, but I'm going to move on to um, the next set of prepositions because, I mean, this is just going to, it could take forever. I mean, there's so much to know about um, Paw and E. And here's where I did a lot of research on this, uh, including asking a lot of questions and also just looking, Googling sentences with these prepositions in them. You know, that's a really good good tool to do. I'm probably going to do some flashcards, um, you know, using prepositions, including these two. But uh, like I said, and again, check for in uh, part one of this video has a whole bunch of live links where you can um, research more and more about, about E and PAW. Okay, thanks for watching. Hadabra.